My name is Daniel Shaw. I'm the Senior Strategy Analyst for Under Armour. It's, it's one of those things that when people ask me what I do and I say I'm a Senior Strategy Analyst, they're like, what does that mean? But I think the big thing for me is really being able to look at the opportunities that we have in the various parts of the company, whether it be women's, whether it be run, and really understand the white space and where we can have an impact. Under Armour is a growing organization that has, doesn't have unlimited resources to do whatever we want. So when we place a bet, we have to make sure that we do all of the research and all of the understanding behind it to know what that, that outcome can be. So I help them with that research. I help them with that understanding. I help them put together those plans to truly understand where we can be successful. I had the opportunity to go to a Maryland football game. The CEO of our company graduated from Maryland and he happened to be there in the area in which, in which we were um, sitting. So, I had 30 seconds to talk to him, but I didn't plan on talking to him. I didn't walk up to him. It just was a natural thing. And then within those 30 seconds, he actually liked what I had to say, and he thought that I could be an asset to the company. So it was very by chance that I, that I happened to be here on a weekend, happened to be at that game, and happened to run into the person who's actually founded and is in charge of the company, and took advantage of those 30 seconds that I had to make him believe that I could do something at a high level. Um, I had just started a job at General Mills where I was an associate brand manager and I didn't want to come out there that quickly but it was one of those things where I made the contact, continued to stay in some kind of contact with them over the year and after a year of working at General Mills I ended up coming out to Under Armour. When I think about Morehouse and I think about Morehouse relative to all the places I've been so whether it's UCLA where I got my MBA, whether it's the other five companies I worked at before Under Armour, you come in believing that you're going to be great in a way that not just great for that position, I'm gonna be great and I'm better than everyone else in the room. And it's really about having to take that step back and say, you know what, I'm very smart, I'm gonna learn how to do this, I'm gonna do it at the best way that I can, but there are people in this room who have more experience and probably could do it at a higher level right now and I need to learn from them to make myself better. Just find someone who has your back and they don't necessarily have to be in the same division as you, they don't necessarily have to be in the same job as you, but someone who has enough experience so you know that when it all comes down to it, when people are in a room talking about you, they're gonna be like, you know what, Daniel Shaw, that guy's all right. Before Under Armour and Under Armour itself, the biggest thing for me and the reason why I chose Morehouse was it was the first time that I ever saw 5,000 people who looked like me who were just as dedicated and motivated to being something great. And that was unique and that was different and that was special to me. Sophomore year when I played basketball my sophomore year and walked on. So I wasn't a scholarship athlete, I actually got a full academic scholarship. And the big thing for me was I never thought about basketball in terms of something that was gonna be a long-term career. Um, in high school, I got recruited by some smaller schools, but they weren't the school that I wanted to go to. So for me personally, I always prioritized my education and always prioritized my long-term goals than something that I just thought was fun and was cool to do. So I'm from California, a bunch of small schools in California wanted me to come play, but I knew that Morehouse would be a better overarching opportunity where I could take my career and ultimately be successful in business one day. I was at a particular point in my career in which it, I could just have stayed there and tried to work through all of it and try the rise to corporate ladder or I can go away for two years and invest a little bit of money um, and then be able to jump on those levels that, that we wanted. So the MBA, while I don't believe it's 100% necessary, I think it, it does serve a purpose when you're trying to move a career, when you're trying to advance slightly faster depending on when you're in that middle management stage and being able to go forward. People are getting mad dashes for MBAs from my understanding and from my experience right now is a lot of people just don't have jobs and so it's an opportunity to keep yourself stimulated, it's an opportunity to get to learn something and it's an opportunity to be able to grow so that when the market changes and the market always changes you're available to move forward. I got laid off in around 2002 um, so that was immediately after the Twin Towers, immediately after all the the issues that people were having with Enron and Accenture and all that stuff. And I worked in a consulting service, which was affected immediately by all of those things. So upon being laid off, I sat at home. I had never not had a job. I had never not been at school. I made sure to, that I went out to select things in order to make sure that people knew that I still was looking and I was still tr actively trying to be smarter and be better. But I took that opportunity to just take a deep breath. I volunteered. I, I worked out all the time. But I took advantage of that time where I would continue to stay active, continue to keep my mind moving so that when the opportunity presented itself again to get a job, which I did at Countrywide Loans in Texas, I was like, I'm ready. Let's go. I feel like I've accomplished a lot. I feel like I feel like when I look at where I am in this time in my life, I feel like it's a good place. But I think successful is it should be a never ending thing because every time you get to a certain level, there should be something else that you should consider a success. So 
For me, success was getting my first job and making X amount of money. Success was graduating, like getting my MBA. Success was being able to, you know, have 12 internship offers when I was getting my MBA. And success now is, you know, being able to make a certain amount of money, have a certain amount of prestige, and being able to, to be able to walk in a room and say, you know what, I am, I deserve to be in here. And I think that's successful to me. So do I feel successful? I'd say yes, but it's a moving target. It's just being able to make sure that my mom is able to go to church and talk to her friends and says my baby is doing something. So if, that, if I define that as success, then I'd say I'm successful. This is Daniel Shaw. Thank you for listening to my story. GRN Paper, we're out.